Hey everyone, it's Chris, and uh, I'd like to welcome you guys back to another part of our uh, Mario clone tutorial series. And uh, now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to add just a little more functionality to player class. And uh, we need our player to be able to detect whether or not he's uh, like hit one of the blocks from uh, from below. Like we're going to check to see, we're going to cast some rays up from his head to see if he's struck the question blocks or the brick blocks or you know any anything that's above him. We don't want to allow him to be able to just jump through platforms, right? We want to send them right back down. Um, and in case a, you know he hits a question block, we want to give him a coin or, or something else. Um, but right now, all we're going to do is we're going to make it so that he can't go through the platforms. So let's go ahead and launch the player class in Mono Develop. And uh, just like the wall rays and the check floor rays, we're going to create another method. And we're going to name this one check ceiling rays and we're also going to pass in a vector 3 position and return a vector 3 uh, the same position um, so just like with the uh, floor rays we're going to need to create origins and uh, raycast hit objects for um, for the check uh, ceiling raise method. So we'll start by creating vector2 and uh, you know what, uh, I'll make this a little faster. Let's uh, copy and paste these. I'm going to put them here and we will just modify these by adding one so these are going to be at the top. Okay, uh, the X positions can stay the same, and we're going to call this seal left, seal middle, seal right. Okay, and our vector two is going to now go up instead of down, and that creates a uh, vector two with coordinates of zero one. And um, you know what we'll do is we'll use uh, we'll use the floor mask um, as the mask uh, for the same uh, for the ceiling because the platform is going to be a floor and it's going to be in the floor layer so <clears throat> in the default layer and the default layer we just don't really need to make another mask for because the the floor is one and the same the floor is the ceiling the floor is the ceiling is a floor so. Just keep it this way. And um, then uh, we'll have to check if our uh, if any of these have a collider object. So check ceiling left. A collider doesn't equal null or ceiling middle. A collider doesn't, e doesn't equal null. Our ceiling right the collider doesn't equal no. Okay. Right. Uh, just as before, um, if any of these don't equal null, then we're getting a collision. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and do the same thing, and we're going to create a reference to our raycast hit object. Uh, we're going to call it hit ray. Now we're going to initialize it with uh, seal left. And um, now we need to check to see if any of these uh, hit objects actually contain a hit object. So we'll check seal left. Uh, if it contains a hit object, then we're going to assign it to hit ray. Okay. Um, else, if it doesn't, uh, we'll check seal middle. And if that contains an object, we'll go ahead and assign that to hit ray. If that doesn't contain an object, <clears throat> I'm going to check seal right. Oops. If that contains an object, we're going to assign that to our hit ray. Okay. And uh, if that doesn't contain it, then like I said before, we shouldn't be in this if condition and it doesn't matter. 
<clears throat> so now uh, we're going to do sort of the same thing we did uh, with the uh, with the check floors. So we need to uh, send the player back down below where he's hitting. So or or moving up depending on you know how fast he goes up or how, how fast he goes down. Uh, we want him to look like he's striking whatever is above him completely before we send him back down. So we're actually going to change his Y position to equal the uh, collider bounds, the collider that he collided with. Uh, we're gonna get the uh, position of the collider. We're going to subtract the collider size. So we get bounds.size dot Y uh, divided by two minus half the height of the player. So that'll make it appear as though the player struck whatever is above him directly on his head and directly on the bottom of whatever he struck. Um, and then uh, we want to, because the player collided, we want to make him fall right back down. So we call the fall method here. And finally, what we'll do is return our position vector and then uh, we actually need to check we actually need to call this method and we're going to call it right here after we check the floors um, we're going to check if velocity dot y is greater than or equal to zero because he'll have to be in the air when we're checking to see if he's striking anything from above so then we check, uh, we assign our position, the uh, check ceiling rays passing in the position. And then if this position changes, whether it changes or not, this position is going to be assigned to the local position of the transform, which is the player. So um, that'll change and, and let's see here, yep. So we are good to go. We should be able to uh, now collide with our platforms from below. So if we the unity, click play, and we run to the, here, so now we're restricted. We can't go past the platform anymore. Okay. So everything is working really well. Okay. We're good to go. All right. Um, the uh, okay, so I'll add uh, I'll add one more little bit of uh, code here before we end the tutorial, and that is to uh, actually animate the player. Um, I'm not going to teach you uh, the mechanism uh, animation system part of Unity right now. I'm also not going to get into creating the animation frames or putting those together. Um, I will show you the code that uh, we're going to use to set the states of our mechanism uh, animations and I'll show you really quick what these look like so if we go into our uh, animations here and we go to the player and uh, open up our uh, uh, animator controller <clears throat> you see we've got some uh, animations here we've got an idle animation a jump animation and a run animation okay and what we also have here are parameters uh, we have is running is jumping and we use these to basically change between these animation states. And these are the properties of our animator that we are going to actually uh, change via our script. And that's what's going to trigger these different animations. Okay? So that's just for you to know, you know, how what we're actually calling here. So without going too much more into this, let's go back into our player script and uh, we're going to create a method uh, let's create it it's not a good spot let's create it right here uh, void we're going to name this uh, update animation states okay so very simply here <clears throat> we're going to check if grounded okay and not walk and uh, okay so basically we're, we're asking okay well are we grounded yes we're grounded um, if we are 
And uh, are we also not walking? So this state will give us our idle state. Basically, the player is not moving, but he's on the ground. So in order for our idle animation state to play, we um, get the animator component, okay? And uh, we're going to use the set bool method, which uh, takes in two parameters. One is the ID, which is a, um, an actual. We can use we can pass an ID as an integer, or we can also, if you'll look, we can pass a string. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass a string, and this is just the name. <coughs> Sorry. And this is uh, just the name of the parameters that I showed you before. So is jumping. We're going to set that to false because our player isn't jumping. And we're going to also set bull as running to false because we're not running. So the only state left is idle. And the idle state is triggered in the animator when both running and jumping are false. So this is going to get us our idle animation. Okay. So now we want to. Uh, we want to also be able to put the player into a running animation state. And the way we do that is we want to first make sure that the player is grounded because we only want him to be in a running animation state if he's on the ground. And we also want him to be walking because he should only be in a running state when he's walking, which doesn't even sound right. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we could have uh, been a little better about naming these variables, uh, but basically walking is running, okay? It's, it's one and the same. Um, so we're going to do the same thing here, get component, we're going to get the animator, and we're going to set bool. And this time we're going to say is jumping, actually jumping is still false, and uh, get component, animator, set bool, is running, equals true. Because in the animator, um, to transition to the uh, <clears throat> to the running state, the uh, jumping and the jumping has to be false and the running has to be true. Okay. Finally, we want to be able to uh, send our character into a jumping animation state, and um, the co the best way to do that is to check and see if he's in the jumping uh, animations or in the, in the jumping state. So we check our player state. And we see if that's equal to character state, or sorry, character state, player state, player state dot jumping. Okay. So if that's if that's true, then um, let's just go ahead and copy, and paste this into here. Change is jumping to true. Change is running to false. Okay, so now we just need to uh, call our um, update animation states method, and uh, we are going to actually call that in our update method. So update animation states. Okay, so now uh, with any hope, uh, this should work. Hopefully, we haven't forgotten anything. I don't think we have. But let's go ahead and load Unity and click on play. All right, so now we're idle because we're on the ground and we're not walking. Now we're in a running animation state because we're running and we're on the ground. Now if we jump, we should go to a jumping animation state. There we go. Yes. There we go. Now we have Mario jumping, running, doing collision detection, checking the floors, checking the ceilings, checking the walls. Starting to look like a game. So uh, what's next? Um, okay, so the next thing we're going to work on is uh, creating the enemy AI script. And um, that's going to be uh, maybe split up into two tutorials. I'm not sure yet. Well, it depends on how long it's going to take. The script itself isn't very long, and most of what is going to be in the script are things that we've just covered in the player script, such as the uh, ray casting and, and you know other things. Uh, animations aren't really going to be a part of this uh, because the uh, the enemy is basically going to always be in a walking state. 
So uh, he's never going to stop walking until he's actually dead, um, and then he's just going to disappear, so there's not really any other animation states. Um, okay, so uh, we'll stop it here, and uh, you guys stay tuned for the next tutorial, and I'll see you soon.